Welcome to Over the Line. I'm Sandy Nunziata, and on this somber Tuesday, considering the events that took place yesterday in Boston, and uh, right off the top of the show, our condolences and our heartfelt sympathies to the victims of those who lost loved ones and certainly all those injured in those horrific actions at the Boston Marathon yesterday. Uh, but what incidents like these do bring up and give us cause for sober thought, how safe are we at sporting events, not only in our country here in Canada, but certainly across North America? And everyone knows that going to a particular sporting event, it's cause for celebration. It shouldn't be cause for anxiety and tension. Uh, now, how far has the industry, and when we talk about the industry, those responsible for turning a profit at stadiums, at concessions, at parking, at security, and certainly the teams themselves, how far have they gone to ensure not only the health, the safety, the welfare, and the protection of our rights at these sporting events, but certainly how far have they come to protect the fan experience? Now, when we go to a game, certainly we don't expect the unthinkable. And if any terrorist, domestic or foreign, were looking to inflict the greatest amount of damage, look no further than North America's sporting pastimes, where the average crowd can be as small as a thousand as large as a hundred thousand but we're not about fear-mongering but we are about educating people and certainly asking the hard questions of those federal and state and provincial agencies that are responsible for ensuring our safety at such public events now unfortunately the tragic events yesterday pale in comparison to what could have happened had there been a more concerted effort to take out life at one of America's greatest sporting events, the Boston Marathon? Now, it's funny. For as far back as 2002, the FBI warned federal and state agencies that they were in possession of terrorist emails and downloaded files of stadiums and certainly when you look at what's gone on over the past decade there has been an increased effort to beef up that security most recent tallies close to four five six billion dollars have gone into securing the safety of venues all across north america at stadiums and as well when you look at the Super Bowl and the Olympics, they are only two functions that have been declared by Washington as natural security special events. And what does that mean? They get federally coordinated protection and support, including FBI and CIA agents to handle and coordinate some of the security and certainly some of those efforts. And unfortunately, um, there are a lot of smaller venues that don't get the attraction of a Super Bowl or the Olympic Games that tragically fall victim to underfunding and certainly uh, some lack of resources to effectively put together a security plan. But the question I always ask is how safe are we when we go to these venues? And for those people that have been to a secured facility you know that metal detectors and certain pat downs at the entrance gates aren't uncommon but if someone was very very determined how hard or how easy would it be to have the kind of effect that we saw at the Boston Marathon yesterday now when we talk about recent happenings um, it wasn't too long ago that the Palestinian group 
Black September murdered 11 Israeli athletes and a German policeman in the Munich Games in 1972. More recently, during the 96 Olympics, Eric Rudolph detonated, successfully detonated a bomb in Centennial Park in Atlanta, killing one individual. If you look at the events at Times Square a couple of years back, it was the efforts of parking attendants that located the getaway car at a nearby airport, which led to the apprehension of the person responsible for placing the undetonated bomb in the middle of Times Square. So everyone has a role to play, certainly, in maintaining our safety and our security. But are we, as fans of sport, willing to do our part and shoulder some of that responsibility through perhaps increased cost to tickets, um, delays at the gate, certain inconveniences getting in and out of sporting events, and if perhaps in order to ensure that particular safety the best that you can, because let's face it, anytime you're in that vulnerable situation, there isn't a 100% chance of success with respect to your safety. But if these certain stadiums and certain law agencies and security officials levied a $10 tax on top of every ticket, would we as a consumer cry? Would we scream foul if we knew that $10 was going towards our security? to beef up security, to beef up the latest technology, to make sure that not only our fan experience was protected, but our health, our safety, and certainly our civil rights. Food for thought. And perhaps not too far on the distant horizon. A surcharge? Why not? If it leads to a more secure venue and we can avoid situations like we saw last night, at perhaps an 80,000 packed stadium at an NFL football game, I think it might be worth investigating. Stick around. When we come back, we're going to stick with that security theme. And certainly, when you go to the ball game, we used to talk about a hot dog and a beer. Not cavity searches, but is that the latest that we as a fan can expect? And should we be pissed off, irritated, or should we be grateful? We experience those long lineups at airports and certainly at other federal agency buildings. Those metal detectors, those x-ray machines, and the cold hands of security guards groping you in the most inappropriate way. Should I be pissed off or should I be thankful that my safety is being secured and guaranteed. We're going to talk about that when we come back. Join me. This is Over the Line, and we're sticking with that theme, security and safety at our most hollowed institutions, if you're a sports fan, and that's the stadium, the ballpark, the arena, and certainly places like the Boston Marathon. Don't go away.